Yeah, hello and greetings from the yurt. This video will be about risks and risk taking, um, trying to keep it under eight minutes. So risk is, well, risk is somehow something that we seem to need to accept when we live. And I've seen a development where we have been trained and paid not to take risks. And I've somehow spent a lot of time in environments where the warrior spirit is very present, uh, namely in organizations like Greenpeace and Extinction Rebellion, where, um, yeah, risk taking is, you're not necessarily asking what is the risk of doing this, um, because you somehow know that the risk of not doing something is much bigger. I want to give you a little example. So there is some a tool for assessing risks. Um, you take the likelihood of something to happen, uh, scale it um, for something very likely. Let's say you give it the value of three. If it's very unlikely, you give it the value of one. So you scale it on a scale of one to three, and then you do not only the same you do the same with the impact. So you have likelihood and impact, both you value on a scale of one to three, and then you multiply the values with each other. So let's say an alien attack to planet Earth, we would consider maybe very unlikely. Um, so it give it uh, the risk, uh, the um, like the likelihood one, and then the um, impact would probably be three. So the overall risk would be three. Where else? Um, cutting yourself uh, with a knife at some point in your life when you work in the kitchen, the likelihood that it happens is probably three and the uh, impact for the well-being, um, maybe even the well-being of the group, the human community uh, is very low. It's like less than one, right? So it's a very low risk and you can kind of safely take that and do this. So when I now look at our world, and like i've been like asked like you you took a big risk stepping out of this comfort zone of house living and moving off grid and into the yurt and uh you know no not knowing how that will be and and so on and so on and i've been thinking like well actually it was not such a great risk like I, I think that the risk of not doing this uh, was actually much bigger. Of course, there was a fear because it was unknown and it was like a step outside of the comfort zone. But still, the risk was like, you know, very easy one to calculate. So let's say, what would be the likelihood that things go worse if I don't do this? Right? The likelihood is pretty much three. So the likelihood of things going worse if we do not change our ways is three. Because we already see that things are getting worse all the time because of how we have acted and how our ancestors have acted. And the impact um, of not changing, well, we can see it. And I don't even want to you know, call it a risk anymore because somehow when we talk risks, we have the feeling that there's a chance that something might not happen. But I mean, when you calculate the risk, like what happens if we continue, it's pretty much nine, right? The impact on the survival of our human species and many, many other species, which is, I think, even worse, is really three. The impact, the likelihood is also three. So that might be, you know, like this, this fear of, of some bad consequences. I think they're bad motivators. I think we should much rather look at the benefits, right? Make a benefit calculation when we're making decisions for our businesses, or our families, or our lives, or our communities. Like, what are the benefits? How likely is it that things will be more beneficial? So when when I think of, well, how likely is it that you get more connected, that you'll be more outside, that you'll eat healthier food, um, that you understand your life, right? That life gets slower, that you have more time, less stress, right? The likelihood is like really high, actually. 
Um, and the impact, what well, tremendous. I mean, like just looking at a low footprint lifestyle, right? It even says it, low footprint and high, high handprint, right? So it's like an upgrade, you know, from, from all the way. So I think that we should take a look at risks somehow with different eyes. And, and look at the benefits. And this is not like a gamble, you know, when you're betting in the horse races or so, you know, because even the fastest horse can somehow fall or something can fail or so. Like there is, or there might be a faster horse, you know, there's no gamble here. This is really straightforward facts, you know, and we don't even need the facts just when you spend more time outside than, than indoors or more time outside than online. You just get a feeling of what is good for the world and what is good for yourself. What what kind of um, yeah life energy you get from this. So I thought to just share this with you, having a look at the risks, um, and just maybe as a motivator, this it, it seems like we're stepping outside of our comfort zone, and of course it's like most wonderful to dare adventures because at the edge of our comfort zones, this is where we grow, this is where we where we feel the most alive, right? And well, I, I almost don't want to want to you know like um, share this secret, but I really feel like I should. Once you do this, you will feel that, wow, I grew a new comfort zone. This comfort zone grew, you know, gradually. It's like when you, you don't need to train or practice to cycle a long distance. You can just start cycling. And then at some point, you will be cycling long distance. Your fitness just gradually builds up for it. And I think the same goes with like high level sustainability and deep nature connection. Because somehow, at least deep nature connection, we were born with it. It's all there. And we know that we love it. So there's not really a risk in taking these big steps and knocking on the neighbor's door and telling the neighbor, hey, you know what? I would like to share a meal with you sometime. Can we do this? How do you feel about this? Or like, look, I have this big box of tools. You can use it, right? It's there. Um, anything. It's all about sharing and communicating. And maybe, yeah, we need to take some risks because... It might be that the neighbor says, like, hey, leave me alone. But, you know, what's the loss, right? So there might be another neighbor or there might be another neighborhood. Take good care. Love you. Bye-bye.